of the Cardiac Surgery Department at the Lancisi Cardiovascular Center, Polytechnic University of Marche, Ancona, Italy. And I'm very glad to be here today and to give you my warmest welcome to our first virtual international meeting on minimal invasive and transcatheter cardiac surgery from theory to practice. If I can have my first slide, please. I must say that uh, one year ago, I had a different plan for today. And the plan was that of having you all here in Ancona, in the place where I live with my family, where I work with my uh, team for uh, a two days meeting with a large international faculty focusing on minimal invasive and transcatheter cardiac surgery for the treatment of patients with uh, valvular heart disease, with atrial fibrillation, coronary artery disease, aneurysm, and heart failure. But probably the most pleasant part of my plan was that of inviting you all here for a social dinner, the participants and, uh, and the faculty for in this special and beautiful place in Ancona. But uh, at the beginning of this year, uh, it was uh, immediately clear to me that uh, the coronavirus didn't like my plan at all. And we all know what happened. The huge loss of uh, human lives we had and um, devastating emotional impact that had on us, on our families, on our lives. Uh, we also know how that virus could uh, uh, adversely affect the organization of our hospitals, the drama of the COVID patients, non-COVID patients, and how we had to reduce to the minimum our surgical activity. We also know how the coronavirus affected our social relationship, this crazy social distancing. But I must say that uh, uh, we uh, immediately realized it was important to react to be resilient and that was at the end of February when everything was starting here in Italy. So we can stay home, but we can't stop. We don't stop and we have to move on. So uh, I must say that um, here uh, to uh, cancel the meeting or to postpone the meeting has never been an option. So we immediately decided when webinars were not so common to convert our in-person meeting into uh, a virtual meeting and best option for us would have been that of broadcasting our conference from a global platform. So what better partner than uh, CTSnet? This uh, is uh, the faculty. I'm not going to introduce none of them and not because I'm not respectful enough. This is just because I don't need to introduce none of them. If this was a basketball NBA game, this would be the All-Stars uh, game. So I'm very honored to have them with, with me and their task will be that of sharing with you uh, their techniques, their approaches, their opinion, their vision, to share their vision of cardiac surgery that we all agree here should be going uh, in a minimal invasive and transcatheter uh, direction. So it's my great pleasure to introduce uh, the first two moderators for this uh, uh, Arctic session. So we will have uh, Professor Tom Guyen from University of Texas, Houston, and Professor Mauro Rinaldi from the University of Turin, Italy. Tom, Mauro, please. Thank you, Professor Diziano, for uh, your leadership during these difficult times. And I want to thank CTSNet for broadcasting uh, this, uh, this event. Welcome attendees from around the world. Welcome speakers from around the world. This is the first time that we're having a true global community with speakers from around the world and a community from around the world. We have roughly 2,000 attendees from roughly 100 different countries. I wanted to start off with three characteristics that I think define our field, resilience, perseverance, and innovation, and innovation. I want to start off with a story that I think many of you can empathize with. I think many times, you hopefully not many times, but there are times where you're stuck in the operating room it's been a long case, a difficult case, five, seven hour case. You're having to reclamp re the aorta just to fix something. You want to leave, but you can't. You see two different scrub tech teams come through. You see anesthesia take their lunch break and then their dinner break, but you stay, not because you want to, because you have to. We're resilient and we, we are here to preserve. We're here to take care of our patients because the patients need us and they come first. Similarly, with the COVID crisis, we're resilient. We're moving forward with this meeting. And again, I want to applaud Dr. Diziziano because 
If there's any small victory from COVID, it's that we won't let the virus dictate our terms. We're moving forward with the meeting that was originally scheduled in Icona, and we're glad you can join. The third characteristic of surgeons in particular is progress and innovation. If we're doing the same thing now that we did 50 years ago, we're not making progress. And that's why many of you are here today to learn, expand, and to learn from one another and for, to learn from our global community and from our friends. With that, I'll start the conference and want to introduce the first concept, a rapid fire session. With that, we'll have a poll uh, and the poll will be how we like to do minimally invasive AVR. If, if we can have the poll question up, please. And if you can scroll down and vote your preference of how you prefer to do a minimally invasive aortic valve replacement. Can we have the poll question up, please? So vote your favorite among these approaches and during the rapid fire session, we'll have speakers give five minute talks on each of these approaches and then we'll also give the results of the, pro, the, the, uh, the poll. So again, you can scroll down on your screen and vote. And if you do that now, uh, that would be great. And the concept of the rapid fire is five minute, very concise presentations on a particular topic. And this is the, the poll that we had at the very beginning, comparing the preferred approach uh, from our audience, mini synonymy, right anterior, mini thoracotomy, transaxillary or endoscopic approach. And it looks like from the poll beforehand that the preferred approach is right anterior, mini thoracotomy. And the transaxillary, endoscopic and mini synonymy are relatively equal at roughly 20%. So with that, we'll move on with our next speaker from Sydney, Australia, Australia, Dr. Tristan Yan, and he will talk about mini stranotomy, why he does it that way. Dr. Yan. Thank you, Tom. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Yeah. First of all, I'd like to thank uh, Michael for your kind invitation. I've been given a very simple task to uh, spend the next five minutes talking about uh, um, mini stenotomy approach for aortic valve surgery. Let's get some basic points out of the way. Um, I think mini stenotomy and mini thoracotomy both are very valid approaches for isolated aortic valve replacement. So cardiac surgeons should be familiar with both approaches and use them interchangeably. The mini stenotomy is a very versatile uh, technique, not only for uh, aortic valve replacement, but also it can be done for complex operations such as aortic uh, root operations, ascending aortic operations, and uh, aortic arch surgery. Now, at our institution, when we perform a right anterior um, mini thoracotomy, we're talking about a three centimeter incision uh, at a surgical axis and a three centimeter femoral cannulation incision. We we'll give anti grade custodial cardioplegia. The disadvantage of this approach uh, is utilizing a retrograde perfusion, and uh, uh, we only can perform aortic valve replacement through this uh, small incision. So why do I use a mini stenotomy? Um, well, I use both approaches, but in this talk, I'm gonna highlight 10 reasons for using a mini stenotomy. Number one, it is safe and reliable. Uh, I use central aortic cannulation for aortic surgeon and makes sense because it provides anti-grade perfusion. You have absolute control of cannulation site there's no risk of retrograde embolization or stroke. Number two, it is basic and simple. Anyone can do that. Uh, you can provide optimal myocardial protection, integrate via the root or direct osteocannulation. I don't use the right superior pulmonary vein vent uh, for simple uh, aortic valve replacement or root replacement. Uh, the, uh, the exact myocardial protection uh, strategies is beyond the scope of this talk. Number three, it is small and clean. A five centimeter clean cut 
um, no bleeding, no dirty groin issues, and no messy lung problems. And it is easy and enjoyable. As a surgeon, I like to set up operation that makes the procedure more enjoyable for myself as well. So we developed this set of surgical instruments with Delacroix Chevalier. These are short range surgical instruments and they give you precise instrument control. You don't have to stand very far away using the long surgical instruments to perform something very simple like aortic bowel replacement. So it's very simple and stable, has a very low profile and the procedure is quite uh, uh, fast and enjoyable. Also, mini stenotomy give you optimal exposure. You have ex excellent exposure of the aortic annulus, especially the right uh, coronary annulus. You have a looking down the barrel view and uh, suture placement is very easy. It's also reduced risk of dislodging any calcium debris. And you have unlimited or unrestricted valve choice. You can use conventional aortic valves, rapid deployment valves, suturless valves, or perform aortic valve repair. And also you can uh, redo the uh, rapid, deploy rapid deployment valves if the valves start to leak. You can change to a conventional valve very easily. So beyond valve, you can do a mini access double valve, aortic valve and mitral. Uh, the mitral can be performed through a transaortic approach or through the superior approach via the left atrial roof. Beyond the mini access double valve, you can do mini access root replacement, such as mini bentel, utilizing the French calf technique, um, or mini access David procedure that we perform routinely via five centimeter access incision. And beyond the mini exit root replacement, going back one slide, beyond the mini access root replacement, you can perform mini access hemi arch replacement through a mini stenotomy, utilizing moderate hypothermia, anti grade cerebral perfusion, um, which is very simple, safe, and direct via this approach. And further than that, you can perform mini access total arch and frozen elephant trunk through a mini stenotomy incision, utilizing branch first technique, zone two arch anastomosis, and a thoroughflex hypergraft, thoroughflex hypergraft deployment. As a matter of fact, we uh, published a whole issue on this uh, and uh, this month's annals of cardiothoracic surgery, highlighting the techniques of frozen elephant trunk, uh, utilizing the mini access incisions. So you can check it out. Now, I have spoken about the 10 points. Uh, the mean to me, it is really safe, reliable, basic, simple, small and clean, easy and enjoyable for the surgeons. You actually can have a very good exposure of the aortic valve, aortic root, and you have unrestricted valve choices. It is only possible if you want to do a mini arch um, or hemi arch replacement, a total arch replacement, it is only possible if you perform this uh, mini stenotomy uh, to the left side. That's the point I want to point out, okay? And if you haven't tried the left side of mini stenotomy, um, the exposure is much better than the right-sided uh, mini stenotomy. Thank you for your time and attention. Thank you, Professor Yan. Thank you so much. It was a very clear presentation and uh, I encourage uh, all the attendees to vote uh, if you have convinced them that uh, mini sternotomy is the best way to uh, to get the, the aortic valve. Um, and with that, so we can the the pool is on. So you have to scroll down and and to vote for your preference. And I uh, move on with the next speaker, which is. Uh, uh, Dr. Marco Solinas is uh, Chairman of Cardiac Surgery at Ospedale Monasterio Massa uh, Pisa, Italy, and uh, he will uh, he will uh, keep up the point of uh, uh, mini AVR. Why 
is doing it with right anterior mini thoracotomy. Go on, Mark. Thank you, thank you, uh, Mauro. Thank you, everybody. And uh, thank you especially to Marco that gave me this opportunity. And for sure, I, I can't wait to come in person in Ancona, especially for the social event. But I've just five minutes, so I have to run. So why uh, I perform AVR through uh, right anterior thoracotomy? That uh, still is just uh, uh, an evolution. And for us, it was uh, from our, let's say, historical uh, uh, minimal access that we start with uh, uh, mitral when we would like to start also with the FVR, the thoracotomy seems uh, our natural, natural uh, way. So, which are the pros uh, of uh, uh, right anterior thoracotomy? There is no standard bleeding, so small pericardial incision, a minimal manipulation of cardiac structure, and the, there is an easy and safe access to the ascending aorta, and this leads to a central cannulation. This is something that uh, we uh, prefer, if it's possible, and it's feasible also in reduced cases. The concern about this, uh, uh, this procedure that uh, is uh, needed a plan, uh, there is some imaging, especially CT scan, that uh, help us to select uh, patients. Cross clamping and uh, to learn this, the, the, for some people is, a, let's say, a difficult operation is needed a mentoring. But we, which is the rationale to perform a right anterior thoracotomy? Obviously, is to reduce the surgical trauma, and reducing the surgical trauma, we will have some uh, advantage that, uh, uh, according also to our previous speakers, uh, nowadays we cannot just consider secondary, um, and the reducing the trauma. These are not randomized trials; they are these are experience, institutional experience. Uh, that compare linear VR right thoracotomy versus full sternotomy, we can have also a, uh, an, ad an advantage in terms of mortality. So also in the hard point, we can impact uh, uh, our patients. And uh, uh, looking also always to literature, there is no uh, possibility, let's say, we don't harm the patient, we choose between uh, right thoracotomy and mini sternotomy, that there is no uh, statistical difference in terms of survival or disadvantage. So, uh, we can really think that in 2020 to take a CT scan uh, to our patient is really <coughs> harming the patient. In my personal consideration to have information, anatomical information like this one can just make the operation safer. So I don't think that this is a concern anymore. And uh, we were uh, quite, uh, uh, let's say, lucky because in 2010 we had the possibility to use uh, new technologies and new technology means new frontiers. Uh, for sure, rapid deployment prosthesis, sutureless prosthesis, the core knot system makes this operation easier for sure and spread education. Uh, we are much more liberal nowadays in, uh, uh, in choosing the patient and more or less with this we can uh, proceed uh, to almost every patient. And in terms of crossing, using this technology we were able to really low down uh, our cross camping time from all, uh, almost 87 minutes to 50 minutes. So, oh, excuse me. Okay, so uh, this is how we do it, uh, we do a 
the right to autonomy in the second intercostal space, 90% of the time, very close to the sternum. And you can see that uh, if you need, you can also, you are not, uh, you don't need to sacrifice the uh, mammary artery. Uh, as uh, we said before, we try to cannulate and do a, a central per, uh, cannulation of the ascending aorta and a percutaneous cannulation of the femoral vein for the drainage. Uh, the aorta is just there, so it's easy and safe to cannulate the aorta from the right anterior thoracotomy. Obviously, we perform then our uh, aortotomy and uh, uh, the, uh, the valve should be, uh, the view is, let's say, with some tips and tricks, uh, we can have a very nice, uh, a very nice uh, visualization of the, of the procedure. And after that, uh, you can choose the prosthesis that you, that the patient deserves. You want, you want to use a sutureless, a rapid deployment, a standard one, it doesn't matter. This is this comes with the experience of the surgeon, with the anatomy of the patient. This is a choice that you can uh, do, uh, and you can plan also on the base of the CT scan. Uh, when the prosthesis is uh, parachute and uh, in place, uh, the only thing that we have to do, obviously, is to uh, close the aorta, and uh, you can see that the exposition of the valve incredibly good uh, and let's say uh, also using a standard uh, prosthesis uh, we can have excellent result so uh, because of lack of time i go further um, so this is the result after two months this is from an aesthetical point of view also if Obviously, transaxillary uh, could be also better than this aesthetic result. And I have to say the truth, I'm starting my program also here uh, in Massa. But the, the other concern, is this teachable? We have got made some, uh, some study in our institution in terms of a learning curve and transfer and how can we transfer the surgical skills to the young surgeon and with a teaching program this is feasible and the learning curve is very flat and everybody can do it so at the end bright arterial thoracotomy is feasible reproducible teachable and learnable is cost effective safe for the patient and comparable for sure to other minimal invasive technique and better than full sternotomy, especially in some subgroup of patients like obese, like frail patient, the old patient. And uh, um, so uh, what I have to say more, oh, sorry, excuse me. Uh, thank you very much for your time and attention. Thank you, Dr. Salinas. Uh, I wanted to encourage the audience and attendees to submit questions. We're going to have a discussion uh, period uh, after the next several talks and try to address your questions. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce our next speaker, Dr. Kappert from Dresden, Germany. And his preferred approach is a transaxillary approach for a minimally invasive aortic valve replacement. Dr. Kappert. Hello, everybody. I hope you can hear me here. We can hear you. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. It's my honor. Yes, perfectly. To perfect, perfect. Marco, first of all, thank you very much for the invitation. It is an honor to dedicate the next five minutes to the question mini AVR why I do a transaxillary. So first of all, I have to say that this is not only a technique. For me, it should be an integral part of a mini invasive concept for an aortic valve replacement. And when minimally invasive surgery is done under direct vision, like we do it, for me, it is an imperative conclusion to go the more lateral way. So the advantages are apparent. First of all, it is a sternal no-touch technique to preserve the integrity of the entire shoulder girdle. 
ribs kept untouched, no sacrifice of the memory. The procedure is done under dark vision without any optical gimmicks, so and therefore more reproducible for everyone who wants to do it too, and it helps to train a special team enormously. The last and the most important point for the patient is the cosmesis with nearly no visible scars in front of the patient, as you can see in the picture. So make the procedure safe, simple, and successful, we have to know everything about the anatomical conditions. So a CT scan is performed in every patient and based on the 3D reconstruction, any aspects can be considered to make the procedures more reproducible and more predictable. This mainly affects by the type and kind of autotomy, vertically, longitudinally, look, localization of the cardioplegia, cross clamping level, height of incision, and the result often confirms the prediction and gives an unbelievable good exposure. So everything can be defined before actual surgery. There are some more points to consider to make the procedure much easier. First of all, it is a javelin thrower position. So the patient is positioned on the table as almost in the CT scans. The incision is made in the third or fourth in the contour space and the right anterior axillary line. Femoral cannulation we use in every patient, sometimes percutaneously, but normally we use a cut down technique. We use a special tissue retractor, special stay sutures, thanks to Joseph Lamelas, vent, cross clamping. And the conventional AVR is done in a conventional manner. Rapid deployment valves are definitely in the foreground, but as you could see, all other valves can be safely implanted. So, after all that, the most important advantage follows. What uh, I have, I cannot see the next slide. Oh, I have to use my iPhone, sorry. <laughs> so the, after all that, the next important, the most important advantage follows. With that transaxillary approach, more than an AVR is possible. A mitral or the combination, tricuspid, mitral tricuspid and combination, Bental procedure, in special selected cases, you can go for a isolated ascending replacement. And this is what we call one access approach with nearly no visible scars in front of the patient. So all this could only be developed on the basis of great experiences. What you can see here is a dynamic description uh, which starts in the year 2014, which was the year where we start our true mini-invasive program at the Heart Center Dresden. The isolated AVR is described and includes 4,552 cases. The trend is clear and shows a 95% share of mini-invasive autograph replacements or CASIDA-based implants in 2019. So this result is thanks to a good team that goes beyond just one. So I have to conclude this was only the tip of the iceberg. And as I said it in the introduction, the transaxillary approach should not, is not only a technique, it should be an integral part of a whole mini-invasive concept. And yes, yes, surgeons should be aware of their position and strength to be able to master all these techniques in their entirety. So thank you very much for the attention. Thank you. Thank you, Professor uh, Kappert. It was a very interesting presentation with this new way of approaching the aortic valve. Um, and um, I will move to the next presentation with uh, Dr. Salvador is presenting us the more 
I would say, the less invasive way to address the aortic valve. Uh, please, Loris, go ahead. Right, me. This is a friendly uh, presentation, just uh, um, showing uh, the uh, our technical style in Vicenza. So, uh, why endoscopic? Oh, because integrating, uh, we think I derived, uh, I realized that integrating the latest technologies and the endoscopy, virtually all patients can be operated uh, without sedation and for isolator or multiple valve disease. And uh, Vicenza, Vicenza is the town of Palladio. Palladian style was widespread around the Western world. So living, not living, work in the town, we decided to have our style. This is the setting for the endoscopy AVR in Vicenza. It's quite simple. There's a working port, a bed line, a thoracoscope, and the aortic clamp. And the key points are the screen monitoring, indirect vision, no resection, and um, the right mammary sparing. In, the, in our uh, protocol, no CT scan is mandatory and we make no selection with patients. So um, uh, this is uh, the uh, Vicenza style. No, this is not minimum invasive. In our, in our opinion, this is the uh, style that we uh, adopt in Vicenza. So from here to here, the step is quite small. And let's go with a few very short movies. Uh, Nowadays, with the, all the um, new technologies, as uh, Marcus Linus says, we can reach any uh, uh, any aortic valve in these uh, in these settings. As you can see, it's like uh, uh, it's a quite clean uh, field, and uh, this is the hole for the thoracoscope, and the other hole was the for the uh, vent. This point we are going with the chip to, put the, to clamp the aorta. This point we are opening the aorta and we are going inside the, uh, uh, the aorta to, to uh, make sure everything is fine. Um, and this is the um, Percival implant. So we use the same technique of the sternotomy with the three, with three stitches. And as you can see, Everything is done under indirect vision on the screen. Um, the, the good thing is the, really the magnifying uh, uh, imaging that you can have uh, with this technique. Um, at the end, uh, of course, uh, it's not a matter of centimeters, but can help uh, on the, the good acceptance of the of the operation by the patient. From the Percival, we are going to see almost with the same approach is three, four centimeters incision is far from the sternum. So it's not necessary to care about the memory artery. So here's the, here's the sizing of the five and three stitches as usual. And this is the uh, rapid deployment and valve. This is how it works in our hands. And uh, uh, we think that uh, with the endoscopy, we feel comfortable because we don't pay attention about the, uh, I mean, the, the, the closet space. This is the final check. And from here is quite uh, intuitive to go in the next step, right? Uh, because we are familiar with the endoscope. This is the triple valve replacement through the same incision is the left uh, atriotomy in this case we perform the repair and uh, this is the uh, water test for the mitral then we went to the uh, tricuspid valve okay nothing to say just uh, to put a ring okay and uh, the next of course is the, uh, the, for the our valve replacement as you could see, uh, could see in the neck in the previous video. In this case, uh, we put in the outer position the uh, the deployment valve. So uh, quickly, what can I say? Uh, the 
the, this technique, the endoscopy, give us the opportunity to have a, uh, a good uh, uh, dominion of the situation. This is the uh, nice thing that you can check if the after deployment bias prosthesis is sitting very well on the on the outer valve. And um, going ahead, of course, uh, with this endoscopy uh, technique, uh, we tried uh, in the beginning, this is the more, I'm sure that this is a movie for only the uh, ascending aorta replacement, but usually uh, we do uh, aortic, uh, ascending aorta replacement concomitant to the aortic valve uh, replacement. This is very strange case to find only aortic valve, aortic, uh, ascending aortic, uh, ascending aorta replacement, but uh, it's good the movie, so I propose it to you. So, uh, this point, what can I say? Endoscopy is, a, of course, is a long way. It's not uh, easy, so you need to have a, a very nice experience, on, a very long experience on mitral valve uh, repairs or surgery, in a way, uh, by endoscopic uh, technique. But when you are familiar with the technique, I think that you reach very good results in this, in this, uh, in this field. So I think that now is uh, this is the population we had uh, is around 20 to, to 264 patients. More of them isolated, some uh, significant concomitant. As you can see, as in our replacement in 11, 32 mitral surgeries, triple valves in seven. And uh, this is the prosthetic that the prosthetic valve we used, and uh, we are going to finish. The Vicenza protocol is this. Under 60, 65 years, we use intuitive stented by prosthesis mechanical. Above 70 or 65 years, uh, if the aorta is regular, we use any period of prosthesis any, at any age. If the sinus tubular junction or the sinus aorta is light, the light dilated, we use intuitive or stented valves. And extremely small anus or other patients, we use personal. We um, we published in our first 125 cases in uh, since uh, September uh, 2018. Uh, we found very good results with this technique. The mortality is very low, eight. We studied also another population, the obese patients. Um, that is quite a challenging uh, for patients, but the mortality was zero. Was good. The results were good. So, and of course, this year, because of the COVID-19, we couldn't go to present our 264 patients to the uh, ATS meeting. So, uh, what can I say? This is our, the pitfall of the endoscopic, uh, endoscopic uh, technique, miniaturization, better visualization than direct vision, no rib resection, sparing the uh, right artery mammary, no mandatory CT scan in our hands. We do no patient selection. We do a concomitant procedure. The CT scan usually we adopt when we have some uh, specific suspect or with uh, uh, dilated aorta at the coronary angiogram. So we finish at this point. Thank you. To the pool, or uh, what? What do you think? Or maybe we yeah. should start a discussion afterwards. Okay. Sure. Uh, I think uh, if we can. So what we did was we had a baseline poll to see what the audience thought about their approach. If we could pull up the poll question again, and uh, this is after everybody's uh, presentation, and it looks like um, there's a strong preference for mini stranotomy. Oh, great. A, a huge from before and after, it's very interesting. 